Um, and I do think that there is a, has always been a suspiciously close connection between the uh, Khalistani world and the criminal underworld, the gangster world. Uh, for example, when the independent Khalsa school was set up by Raputaman Singh Malik, one of the Air India suspects who was acquitted at the trial, when it was set up many years ago in the early 80s, the whole idea, according to Malik himself, and again, I'm quoting, was to keep Sikh kids away from secular Canadian society. They were the other. They were something else. They were apart from the rest of society. And you do find, it's most unfortunate, uh, that there is a significant proportion of the uh, Sikh diaspora population particularly in areas of Khalistani influence, uh, who get involved in crime. This is contradicted again by the great mass of the Sikh diaspora, which, as you well know, all over the world, including in Canada, has been very successful, law-abiding, tax-paying, have been prominent in uh, the professions, in the bureaucracy. Uh, they've done very well for themselves and generally are regarded as extremely good citizens, except for this very small minority, and I emphasize this is a very small minority of the Sikh diaspora that we're talking about that right. seem to be interested in this. But, but to your point, uh, yes, there is a, a problem for Canada in any community where there is a, a suspiciously high level of crime. Uh, and it does seem that um, uh, most recently, for example, uh, Malik, the founder of the Khalsa School, uh, who was murdered in the middle of July in a contract hit, it does seem that that, that involved organized crime. Uh, I, I mean, you and I don't know who to call if we want a contract killer, but these people did. Um, so they were connected with the criminal underworld, and so was he. And he, of course, was uh, the main financier back in the day of the Baba Khalsa, the terrorist group which blew up Air India. So it is